everybody what's up how's it going welcome to the wednesday stream hey Mern over on kick what's going on man enjoying yourself over there i'm rocking the plain white tee today that kind of day but man love seeing you like before 11 p.m yeah i'm trying to do it a little earlier uh <laughs> trying we'll see how it goes no i'm i'm gonna try uh keeping the streams a little earlier try to find a good time to start like deciding when i should stream at the same time i'm trying to stream for people who are also working so they can enjoy the stream or their pc that's also a balance <laughs> that I'm trying to balance at the same time. I'm trying to schedule with my schedule or work with my schedule and then work with other people's schedules and then trying to find also a good, like, sweet spot where other people join and watch. It's a fun time. <laughs> I, there's so many variables here for just streaming. I wish I could just stream. What do you think of the new camera? It is the Logitech Rally, this guy over here. Clean? Does it look good? I was looking at it yesterday. Yesterday was my first run with it, and it looked pretty good. A lot uh, cleaner. The only problem I'm having with it is the autofocus. It seems to... And I think it's, I think it's got something to do with my lighting. I think my lighting is too powerful. So it's... Just constantly trying to autofocus on things. Right now, it's not really doing much because nothing's really moving. But when I'm moving parts around, it starts freaking out and is like, ah, autofocus, autofocus. There should be a setting you could turn off autofocus. Yeah, but when I turn off autofocus, I'm constantly picking up parts and kind of bringing it to the camera. And then it's like, derp. And then I can't, and then I gotta sit there and manually autofocus because it's not, I don't know. I just had trouble with it. I'll figure it out. I'll play around with it and figure it out. See what uh, mode I like best. I just haven't had a lot of time to play around with it. I at least got the camera set up. And I also have a mount up top for it. But the motor on the camera, because it can move and I can do cool stuff like with my remote, move it. Which is cool uh, but the motor doesn't like to run when it's vertically mounted off the ceiling it does not like to move very well because it's heavy I mean for a thousand dollar camera you'd think it would do better but I mean I mean look at the zoom on this thing this is where autofocus is gonna start complaining Let's zoom in on the graphics card right here. Hey, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, I just told it to go home. <laughs> Center it up. I don't know. I like the camera so far. I just got to play with, play around with it. But, I mean, overall, it's a crisp image. So today we're going to be building a white PC, if you couldn't tell. We've got a white case, a white motherboard, we got white RAM, we got pink and white cables, and a white AIO. And then a couple of custom backplates or plates by V1 Tech. So, cool! So we're going to be going through this build. Alright, so to kick it off, let's run through the build list like always. We got an Intel i7, it's a 12700K. Uh, we got this paired with an ROG Strix B760A gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. This is a DDR4 motherboard. And we also have it paired up with 32 gigabytes of GeForce Delta addressable RGB RAM. This is at 3600 megahertz uh, CL18. And then a 1 terabyte M.2 Gen 4 by Silicon Power. This is a read write up to 5000 megabits per second. 
The graphics card is a 3070 Ti, though on the estimate uh, we originally quoted a 3070, and I was able to actually jump on a 3070 Ti for them at the same price. So we got the Ti getting that GDDR6X, because the 3070 doesn't have the GDDR6X, but the Ti does. We got that all... It was just an extra bonus or win. We got some custom pink and white cables we're putting in here. Uh, specifically, we were looking at a pink and white theme within a relatively 2,000-ish budget. But the 2,000-ish budget also included a monitor, a mouse, a keyboard, a mouse pad. Which, if you saw the post from earlier, a couple days ago, which I was supposed to stream this build on Sunday and then timing didn't work out. Um, or Saturday. Uh, just time didn't work out. And uh, you'll see the monitor, the mouse and keyboard and all that, which is... Monitor is an AOC on monitor. It's a nice 27 inch. But the mouse pad is a 3XL by Glorious, which is a white mouse pad. So it's super big. It's going to cover the whole desk. Um, so I was super happy to get this for a really good price to go with the setup. And then the keyboard and mouse, the keyboard we went with the G713, which is the the keyboard without the numpad it's mechanical uh and it has some really cool rgb on it by logitech or logi whatever brand you want to call it now it, they, they keep switching their names or they're, they're logitech still on all of their packaging but they're actually logi now so for awareness but uh this is a really nice white gaming keyboard with some rgb on it and then of course we're sticking with the Logitech theme and we went with the G203 for the mouse in white. The whole setup's gonna look badass when it's done. The whole setup's gonna look badass. Alright, so to cool the CPU, we got the Deep Cool LS720 that's up there. Uh, this is a 360 millimeter AIO with three 120 millimeter PWM addressable RGB fans. And what's really nice about this cooler. And the fans by Deep Cool is that they are daisy chained, so it's less cable management in the back, keeps things a little cleaner. Uh, but it's in white, as you can see, and it has RGB on it. All the things we want to see. Um, last thing I wanted to do is grab actually a fan for the rear because I forgot this case doesn't have one, and I do want one for that. I have some white fans. White. They're Lee and Lee fans. These are the ST120s. And usually I have a package or two of these sitting around. And I've got one left in this package. And I just hope I have a controller for it. Or cable for it, should I say. If not, I think I have a fresh one. Yep, I should. At least have a splitter and the hub. That's cool. Um, yeah, I've got one floating around here somewhere, so we'll figure that out. Either way, we're gonna use this fan by Leon Lee for the back. All right, guys, let's go ahead and let's build it. Let's get ready to rumble. I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way so that we have some space to work. We're going to need that, that, that. Don't need that. Oh, and the uh, power supply is 850 watt. This is a brand that I probably not used very much, in, at least on the streams. You haven't seen me use it, but I have been using this brand for a while on some of our builds uh this is one of your cheaper motherboard i'm sorry power supplies that include the pcie 5.0 which is atx 3.0 ready uh which is nice so it's got the pcie for the bigger graphics cards already built in it's 850 watt fully modular and it's white so that was a plus
and it's gold rated. All right, so I'm gonna need some tools. I actually have some of my tools all over right now. So I'm working on the build behind me, which again, yeah, but it is a fully custom open loop build back here. Then pain in the ass that thing back there so the back of that pc is actually the complete reservoir so everything on the back is the reservoir for the open loop now the cables and everything get sandwiched between the reservoir and the back of the motherboard and it opens up like a hinge and that's the only way to get to the back of the pc if you would need to get back there but i've had to go back there not once not twice not three times or four, but five times after I've had it plumbed because of stupid stuff like the Lee Strimmer cables not working or uh, thermal or thermal takes fans not working or something got unplugged because it's so, so small back there that all your cables just get smashed together and something got pulled loose. So that's been a really fun build. And I say that very sarcastically. And so it is very time consuming because you have, it, since it's hard tubing, uh, you have to take it apart in order to get to the back. <laughs> so you gotta unplumb it to fix it. And so that's been an ongoing battle with that one. And obviously I'm not going to deliver it. Not completed. What is in here? That is just weird how they did that. Hey, Briston, what's up, man? Oh, I would have just put the cover on and hope it works. Well, that's what I did four times. <laughs> and by the fifth time, I'm like, all right, I have to make sure every cable is zip tied so that it can't move. And that's pretty much what I did. So I spent a day zip tying every single cable in the back. I mean, it is clear, so you can see right through the back and see the back of the uh, motherboard and all the cables and the mess. <laughs> I missed the CPU and GPU specs on this build. So this build, it is a i7-12700K. And the GPU is a RTX 3070 Ti. So we've got the 3070 Ti and the i7-12700K that we're going to be building with today. And this is going on a ROG Strix B760. Uh, B, and it has got the white accents that we want for the white build. I'll get the camera pointed down here in just a moment. There it is. That's better. Say, hey Ben, we can't see. This is new to me, this whole camera moving thing. From looks clean. Oh yeah. It's clean. So we're gonna go ahead and start by getting the CPU mounted. I actually need an LGA bracket, I forgot. Here, one second. That's an LGA 1700 bracket. Sorry about that. Um, is it an automatic camera? No. Uh, I do have a remote for this one. That's the Logitech Rally if you want to look it up. Uh, if you look on 
this screen here, or this camera, you'll see the Logitech Rally right here. So, kind of blending in with all those boxes. But I could do really cool things like, hey, let's really zoom in on this motherboard. Yeah, look at that. Give you guys motion sickness. That's not even maximum zoom. We can keep zooming in. Oh yeah. <laughs> so anyway, now you can really see me work on it. That's sick. <laughs> No, yeah, I think it has like a 20x or 25x zoom on it, which is super crazy. And it also has, I mean, it holds the resolution pretty well when we zoom in. So I'm impressed. I, I've actually worked with these quite a bit in the past, um, doing uh, Teams room systems. And I was super impressed by the, just the abilities and how clean it is. They're not cheap though. <laughs> Definitely not a cheap camera, uh, but they're they're nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the socket up here. Now you can really see what I'm doing. <laughs> and then we're gonna drop the CPU in there, and then we're gonna take that stock bracket off. For the, yeah, the stock LGA brackets, we don't want to use those. We want to use an LGA 1700 contact plate instead. So here's our i7 12700K going into the socket. You can only go in one way, there's two notches on the top and bottom. And then we're going to get our LGA. plate. Uh oh. I don't know why it's not auto-focusing here. Maybe we're zoomed in a little bit too far, too close. Looks crazy expensive. Uh, oh yeah, the office and Novi has some automatic thing that will auto focus on each person's face. Yes. Yep, that is using your AI to follow people that are talking like speakers. And then uh, actually Jabra makes a really good camera and soundbar system that follows or will, will basically create a square for each person's face and everything. Or if you're if you have a U-shaped uh, room that everybody's sitting at and you're sitting right up against the wall where the camera is, it actually can capture that because it has three different cameras and it makes like a, a what do you call it? It makes a single image out of three different cameras so it can capture everybody, which is super cool. That is by Jabra, and it works with Teams. And you can use it with a bring your own device scenario, or you can have a PC behind the TV and use it that way as well. Set it up as an actual room system. You don't have to bring your own device, you just walk in and use a controller to tap and join the meeting, such as the Logitech Tap, or the Logitech Tap IP. But yeah, there's a lot of cool cameras out there right now. There we go. I got our contact plate on. We just need to put some screws into it.
I'm only starting the screw for each one here. You can see that I'm counter turning through. And that's to find where it starts to bite. That's because we want to try to get this as even as possible all around it. I'm going to do like quarter turns here. And then just rinse, wash, repeat. Repeat the process. Still we're snug. We're getting there. good to go. So that is a LGA 1700 contact plate and what it does is it actually helps keep the CPU flat. So there's less um, less flex in the CPU. There's more contact, better contact anyway for the cooler uh, and better the, con the better contact equals better cooling. You have ever lost have i ever lost a piece before no i've not lost any pieces i mean i've dropped screws but i mean i have thousands of screws <laughs> so no worries there all right so let's go ahead and tackle this ssd this is a m.2 Gen 4 by Silicon Power. We're going to be doing the PCIe slot, so let me move us over just a little bit. This is just going to slot in on a slight angle here. So I'm on a slight angle, push it in. You can see it just kind of hovering there. And then we're going to push it down. And use a little clip to hold it in. And then we're going to peel uh, this guy off. That is a heat pad on the bottom there. We want that to have full contact to our SSD so it helps cool passively the heatsink. We are. We're installed. All right, so next I'm going to peel some of these peels off so I don't forget them. Make sure there isn't any others. There's always one here on the Supreme FX. Then we'll get the RAM installed. We've got two sticks of 30 or two sticks of 16 gigs total of 32 gigabytes of cl 18 3600 megahertz this is uh team group t force delta addressable rgb ram nice stuff and it's in white 
we're just going to fill the two slots. DDR4, not a DDR5 rig. There we go. We got 32 gigs of RAM installed. We got our L our uh, i7 12700K installed and our two ter or one terabyte Gen 4 SSD installed. We're ready to zoom back out and get the case out. Slap this in the case. Down. The case out, which we actually have to pull the back panel off. Get the hardware out. There we go. We're ready to rumble. Hey, yeah, I got swords. Thanks for that sub, man. Nice to see you. <laughs> I got to see you back at it. Yeah, uh, I never really quit. I was just, I, I just didn't have a lot of time to stream. We were having lots of fun over here. Keeping up with orders and all sorts of stuff. Now I can slow down again and get some streams in. Make sure all our studs are in. All right, and then we just got nine screws to fill out. We're installing the motherboard into the case. Yeah, there's also more to it, Scotty. You and I can chat later. But for the most part, time was a problem. <laughs> What's going on with the build tonight? So this is a white slash pink accent build. And we're working with an i7-12700K, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM on a uh, B760... ROG Strix D4 motherboard. That's DDR4. And a two ter or one terabyte Gen 4 uh, SSD with an RTX 3070 Ti and 850 watt gold power supply. Uh, and a couple of V1 Tech custom plates, RGB plates. One for the graphics card and one for the case. So, super cool looking build. I haven't decided exactly where I'm putting the plate, one of the plates. I can put it in three locations because it's a universal universal uh, plate. I wish I would have thought of another location beforehand. I think it would have been better in this case. All right. I'll be happy with it. All right, there we go. Mr. Peel. All right, all nine screws are in. Now we can focus on uh, getting the top connections to the motherboard completed so we don't have to deal with the radiator, which is going to be blocking some of the position here. If I remember correctly, this thing is tight going into this build. 
so it's a tight fit. Very tight fit. In fact, I might have to remove the ram to get it in. Now that I'm looking at it, but I've done it before, so I'm not worried. It's just a matter of getting all our connections at the top done first before we put the radiator in. That's the important piece. I'm always free to talk, Ben, if you need to. Oh, I'm good. Like, I'm, I'll, I'll hit you up later. Like, nothing like that. Just a transition. It wasn't good. But it wasn't bad. Alright, let me get our cooler unboxed here, that's what I'm working on currently. And then I need to get our power supply unboxed as well. Or you know what, we have the kit, but never mind. An idiot. We don't need the power supply unboxed. They do need these cables from the AIO. Now my shoulder's kind of in the way here. I apologize. It's a tight fit. I just needed to wrap a couple cables there. Now getting our pump in is going to be important as well because the pump header is all the way up here. Um, but before we mount the radiator, we're going to have to plug that in. Alright, set this aside. Also tackle yes, cables for the CPU. Elon, not shoulder, elbow. Sorry. One or the other. It was, I knew it was in your way. Something was. I have a close up of my elbow. You want to see my funny bone? All right. Just adding some cable combs to these cables a little bit of a tricky fit I will say that downside to using this this particular case is the tricky fit That's nice. Struggle bus.
Building computers, they said, was easy. Got news for you. Not all PCs are easy. Some of them are a pain. Alright, so one of the last things we want to do is get maybe this guy mounted so we can have the cable pushed through and routed well. This is our rear fan. That's going to be a pain in the butt if we need to uh, route those cables. Hey, hey, what's up, Agent Smith? What's going on, man? Welcome back to the stream. Long time no see. It's like we stopped streaming last night and we're streaming again. Gonna feel like that all week. Just need to get this fan mounted. So I need some fan screws. Fan, some fans, screws, screw fans. <laughs> Was not expecting that. <clears throat> but we want to try to get this fan as low as possible for the clearance of that uh, AIO radiator. What's a good router for gaming in your opinion? I would, you know, funny thing, I've been asked that question three times today. I mean, personally, I've never had really a big issue using the Xfinity router, if that's what you have currently. Like, that's like the most popular service I deal with around here. But the uh, gaming router, if you have to have a gaming router, I would say go with an Asus brand. Um, or look at TP-Link, or look at Linksys. Or, yeah, Linksys. You have charter internet? Yeah, I don't know what their modems are like, or what their router modems are like. Uh, Xfinity's, I mean, I have a pretty fancy one, so that's what I'm currently using. And I don't, I've never really had a problem with it, but I do have TP link through the house for the Wi Fi. That's like a, that's a mesh Wi Fi. The, the only problem with that is anything wired, which is on the Xfinity router, anything wireless can't communicate. Unless I, unless you build a route for it, and that's if you have a router that can do that. You don't have to worry about that if you put everything on one thing. <laughs> so if you could just go buy a gaming router, forget I said that. But I was just explaining my struggles. So regardless, either way, uh, gaming router, Asus or EP Link or Link says, I'm hard hardwiring into my PC, but getting one gig like I should, but not getting. So that could be a bandwidth problem on the ISTN, not your router. Or you have a cable that can't support that speed, 
it might be an older ethernet cable or you could have if you have a hub after the modem somewhere that's splitting off the connection that might not be or that could be the problem too so it really depends literally from the cable outside coming into your house to the modem what you have in between all of that from the cable outside to your destination which is your pc what's in between all of that that's what makes the difference it goes modem then router then my pc so it could be your router your router maybe has a cpu on there if it has too much traffic going through the wi-fi and the wire then it can boggle or bog it down and then cause what we call a bottleneck on the network So that's probably the problem although it could still be the service what you could do to test is take your pc plug it directly into the modem unplug your router from the modem and test while it's only on the modem and then if it's a full one gig then you know the service is good the modem is good and the router is probably the problem or something in between it's still not good it could be a cable problem it could be a service problem could be a modem problem but more than likely it's a service problem just call them and have them test that's another way you could do it say hey i'd like you to test my modem they can actually should be able to ping your modem and do a speed test then yeah it is well it is a lot, substantially more bandwidth I'd call Charter and ask them to do a speed test on your modem. Or just tell them you're not getting the speeds that you pay for. Start there. That's probably the easiest route. I don't have to do this 24 pin yet, but I'm just going to do it since I'm sitting here chatting anyway. They underrate their speeds? Yeah. Just give them a call and see what... They could take a look. They could probably take a look at it before you buy a modem or a router. Routers are especially gaming routers. Anything with the word "gaming" in it is expensive. And I'm not really a true like fan of the gaming routers. I think it's just a marketing scheme from for them to make money, and they're just building out the same thing for an office it just handles higher bandwidth that's all it's doing you could probably, probably re do your research and get the same thing for cheaper without the label of a gaming router or get something nicer for the same price but when you're spending like 200 plus on a router because it has the word gaming in it. Kind of ridiculous. And it's probably not much different than your like 60 or $80 standard router. Cable comes. Ooh, pretty. Oh, don't tell me I did that. <laughs> I'm an idiot. That one is currently 49% off. Uh, the Netgear Nighthawk? Eh, Netgear's alright. They've been around for a long time. Nobody said anything about the cable comms. Nobody caught that. Nobody saw. We're just not going to talk about it. And it never happened. I'm just going to continue to think about it, though. 
that's what I currently have, the neck gear, but older model. Well, I mean, if you, yeah, if you're running an older model, it's probably Wi-Fi 5. But yeah, you said you're wiring, so it doesn't even make a difference. Hmm. Right, CPU bandwidth on the router, but again, I would check with your service provider before you spend money. If they find a problem, then it's on them to fix it, not you. Or they may not be able to provide exactly the service that you're paying for, and they may be able to give you a discount on your bill. Round two of the 24 pin, why not? I love cable combs so much. There we go. Now they're pointing the right way. Because I'm special. Oh la la, it's pretty. All right, so I just put the uh, bracket on the motherboard there so we can start getting that mounted before we get too far along here and forget to do that. That's for the AIO to mount to the socket. Uh, don't lie to us. I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. That was so far in the past now. Nobody remembers it. It's gone. Moving on to bigger, better things. <sighs> the ripped ones. go. 
But oh, are you a bug? You're a wee bug. Your towel. Very nice. <laughs> Kiddo had a show finger towel. I like spending money, lol. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love spending money too. But at the same time, saving money is very important to me. <laughs> Alright, I think we're ready for the AIO radiator time. Time to play with the radiator. Yo. Let's move that aside. Get that radiator out. So we're mounting like so. That means our cables need to come from side. This is a Deep Cool LS720, 360 millimeter AIO. Got three 120 millimeter PWM addressable RGB, modular, daisy chained. I don't know why I said modular, I meant daisy chain. Daisy chain fans. And it's white. So it kind of goes with the theme. Oh, very nice. I think I have a... <laughs> oh, yeah, your mama needs that. So brush your hair. Girl. Oh, deep, you're cool. What? <laughs> Don't tempt me with a good time. Mama can help you. All right, so don't let me forget. I need to plug in the pump before we mount the radiator. Do not, for the life of me, let me forget that. Because <laughs> I'll lose my mind. Truly, I will. Oh man, I wish there was something I could redeem my channel points on. Ah, oh. I almost thought about canceling Twitch and just sticking with Kick. No, I'm just kidding. I'm keeping Twitch around. Don't worry. <laughs> I really don't like. What do I do for redeeming channel points? I don't even. I haven't even had time to like sit there and think about it and put it together. It's not, no, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm not canceling Twitch. It's, it's We're staying on Twitch. We're staying on all the platforms that we can for now. Um, Aiden Smith, zero bits. 
Well, I mean, I could start charging you for sound bits. Or sound alerts. You can make them channel point. Oh. I just thought it's kind of like a free 99 thing, so <laughs> keep it free 99. You're distracting me because I'm trying to focus on not forgetting to plug this pump in. The, the distractions are not there for good things, right? They're there to distract me, trying to make me mess up. I'll have you know, I guess it's your stream. I, I just, I just don't know. Like, I haven't put a lot of thought into it, honestly. What do, what do you think I should put on here that charges bits? Give me some ideas. Roll them out. Let me know. I just don't have the ideas or the time to, like, sit there and think about it. That's my biggest problem, I guess. All right. Pump. You're getting plugged in a right meow. Feels like the radiator's gonna fall. But then I forget. I'm holding on to the radiator because I have the pump. Working on too many of these custom open loops lately. I'm consuming builds. Let me tell you. in there. Stop. Don't argue with me. Just get in the hole. I have to use my dad voice in it. Why is this even a thing? We just need to squish it, this in. We are gonna have to remove the ram. That was dumb. I thought of that. See what, see what happens when you're distracting me? Now we're just gonna finagle this bad boy in here. Who told me to put this 24 pin in? One of you guys. Now that's in the way. <laughs> like how tight this is? This is just, just ridiculous. I thought I could sneak this in with the fan in the back on. But apparently that's not the case. I have to drop the fan. I'm not going to pull it out completely. I'm just going to have the cables there. Then I'll have to remount the fan. Why not? I'm acting like I'm just super irritated, but I'm, I should have known better. Not like, there goes a the screw. Hey, whoever asked if I lose parts, I just lost a screw. It just went into the box of abyss. I'll show you that. Show you guys that later. The box of abyss is actually quite interesting. All right, so now what? What now? What the deal is? I don't even know. Like, there we go. Now, now you go up there. Talk about a tight fit. See, this isn't... That shouldn't be normal. I think it's just this deep cool. 
cooler is a little bit bigger. This is the second time I've ran into this problem in this case with this cooler. I use this cooler a lot. I'm going to start not using this case a lot. I like the cooler. I like the case. I just don't like how the 360 millimeter AIO mounts on the top. It just, it's tight. Tight fit. So, dear Fantex, your Eclipse 360 is too tight. See if we can get the ram back in there. <laughs> oh, this is funny. This is what I have to do to make this fit. Don't worry, this fan's going back on. Are you guys enjoying watching this? I'm not going to admit that I should have gone with the Land Cool 216. Number one, white is impossible to find. Number two, they take forever to get here. Number three, they take forever to get here. Number four, they take forever to get here. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm glad somebody's enjoying this. Alright, so now that we've got our AIO installed, maybe I should have just done that first. We'll put our rear fan back in. Right? With our missing screw now. And you can probably see now why that was not going in there with a uh, rear fan installed. It just wasn't going to happen. Oh, 
All right. Now, we might be able to mount this cooler. Or at least the block to the CPU. Maybe we can do that. Have no more problems the rest of the build. No more problems the rest of the build would be awesome. Man, who the hell designed this damn thing? Oh wait, that was me. <laughs> there you know watching PC. Me, you, me, build PCs. Is your fix. Well. The struggle is real today. I don't know who designed this thing, though. I mean, honestly, he should not be building PCs. It's terrible. Whoever it was, they're terrible. Whoever thought putting this radiator in this case was a good idea? I mean, come on. You guys with me on that? Grab it. Here's more elbow. Okay, well, sadly, Ben, I gotta go get ready for my thingy, but, ooh, get your thingy ready. Um, But I hope the rest of your stream goes great, man. Oh, man, thanks for stopping in and hanging out. I appreciate you. Long time no see. Need to stop into one of your streams, too. I am getting the noties. Not that I, I can't really use that excuse anymore, can I? I'm just kidding. I feel like everybody was using that excuse. Oh, I didn't get the noties. And then everybody thought noties weren't working. When actually they are. Just kidding. But the, uh, no, I've just been super stupid, crazy busy. So I apologize. I've been meaning to catch a couple of uh, people's streams that I haven't been able to normally. That I normally would. So yeah, hey man. Go do your thingy. And uh, I'll catch you, catch you next time. Oh, I missed a bit of for a couple of weeks because of my dog. Oh. Because of your dog, but you're back at it. Nice. Yeah, we'll chat. We need to catch up. Take care, man. We'll see you around. It's Thermal Grizzly time. Ladies and gentlemen, the Grizzly... You too, Ben. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. All right, let's mount this bad boy. And we, uh, we are done talking about cooler on this PC. I don't want to talk about this cooler again. Zip tie? Oh, that's a sad zip tie.
How do I get my fingers up there? There you go, that's pretty clean. Don't you think so? Hey Amy, what's going on? Epic finally gave me the okay to talk to you about a build. Oh, oh Eric, Eric finally gave you. Oh well. <laughs> How much is this build? Uh, this build was in the 2000 range. An all white build. We would go with a different case though because I had a little bit of trouble with this cooler fitting in this case. <laughs> Slightly different. The Unli versus Fantex. That's the only difference. <laughs> but overall, uh, the same build would be around 2000 Sorry, I didn't see the chat message over there on Kick because my multi-stream platform doesn't like Kick's chat. I want the white with pink. <laughs> well, we got more pink too. I mean, look at all the pink. Then we also have uh, custom back plates. These were extra outside of that $2,000. This is a back plate for the graphics card. Here, let me show you the whole thing though. And hopefully the camera auto focuses. There we go. Um, but that's a custom back plate that was extra by V1 Tech, the dressable RGB. And then we also have a case plate we're going to be using today too. So. We could do, we could definitely do an all white pink build in that $2,000 range. Or if you want more, we can add more. We can even do custom cables by cable mod. We can do paint jobs. You see my recent paint job over on uh, twi uh, Twitter? Go check out the Twitter page and let me know if you like that paint job. That's a Phoenix with red and orange and all sorts of different colors mixed in there. But, you, but we could do something else if you wanted a cu uh, custom paint job. We could also do etched glass, too. So whatever you want. You let me know. We could do it. All right, so I guess I'm ready to start plugging stuff in from the case to the bottom of the motherboard. Now that we have the top of the motherboard sorted out. Top of the case, anyway. <clears throat> We're going to flip this bad boy around. We can get to backside, and then I'm gonna just punch the mic with my head. Why not? As I look for my USB three up there, I have to reroute this. Dang it! Who's on a struggle bus? I am not on a struggle bus. All aboard! The struggle boss. Actually, hey, hey, yeah. 
naughty. My wife says I'm on a struggle bus right now, but I don't feel like I'm on the struggle bus. I feel like I'm a-okay. Yo. That paint job was good. What kind of paint did I use? Um, I used that black brand on Amazon. I shop around for good deals on it, but it's a it's a super nice um, brand. It doesn't uh, spit like at all. That's what I hate when I'm spray painting, like when it spits. It was a spray paint. And then I used some custom stencils to get the phoenix and the fire, the flame. And then uh, painted one layer of paint red. And then started doing different colors in different areas of it to get that kind of flamey look. The panels, I was rethinking something. And I'm also going to add more to the... Um, Phoenix, because I'm not happy with it yet. It's not, it's done, but it's like I could call that done, but I, there's more that I want to do to it. Like, thought I was using this hub, and I just realized that we're not using the hub. glass would be pretty. I just want a really clean white with the pink cords and lights. Well, that's what this is. We could definitely do that. Are you ready to do it? Like, jumping on a call and building this thing out? You do that right here after this stream, if you'd like. Build it out. I just need an RGB splitter cable for Lee and Lee.
Yeah, the paint was called is a brand but called black. Look it up on Amazon, black spray paint. We'll see what I am at about. Nice brand. Friendly. Special. Make fans work. That was sarcasm, by the way. Not even the right one. Mother! Ah, we need a cable for the cable for the RGB for Leah Lee. Literally, this is how it goes. Three pin RGB to three pin to this three pin to make a four pin to plug into the fan. Like, what the hell, at Le Leon Lee? I thought you were cool. I never really complained about that before until just now. Now I need a splitter because I have more addressable RG to plug. Where's my splitter? Uh. For some reason, my five volt pin pins are not where they're supposed to be. Aha. Hey, what move? Hey, how'd you move? You're going good on this bill. <laughs> this build then, uh, Quite the challenge, but not as challenging as that other build that I was talking about earlier. So, still no match. I think I've built too many PCs this week. I think that's the problem. Like, I need to take a vacation building. That will solve my problem. I think we're ready to flip this over and finally plug the stuff in on this side. Get a power cord, addressable RGB header. Okay. 
that I can't seem to plug in. Sorry, you're staring at the back of my head. You know, if you see any grays. Because this build's giving me them. Alright, and then our HD audio. For our front panel. Front panel audio. And then finally, last but not least, our USB 3. There we go. <laughs> Looking good, right? Let's go ahead and plug the graphics card in. Get that done. My screwdriver go. Got the little push button. So here is our GeForce RTX 3070 Ti going in here. This is a B1 Tech panel. I'm gonna get the magnets on there. We're only gonna need a couple of magnets for this one. Please build mine before. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> the jokes. Yeah, I know, I got it. Yeah, I know, I'm joking too. <laughs> Earlier, I was asking who the hell put this thing together or designed it. It was funny because it was me.
Come on. Why are you gonna be like this? Gear V1 tech. Little sticky things don't like to let go of their sticky things. Quite literally, that was a big pain in the butt just to These are just uh, putting double-sided tape down so you can stick the magnet. I'm going to stick to the metal. Okay. Then, hold the down thing. That is what we're doing currently. process. All right, we got one panel done. Now I want to try to put these down in there. Cable code. Alright, and then the GPU backplate goes right here. Just need to get the magnets on that. Magnet locations, we got one, two, three. Weird spots.
All right, doing the final plate here, and then we'll be able to cable comb, power supply, cable manage, and power on. We're getting close here, boys. Ladies and gentlemen. Final results. Fancy. All right, so now let's get cable combs on this PCIe cables. Then we can move on to the power supply and cable management on the back side and power it on. Oh yeah, it's looking good, yeah? This is looking good, yeah. Power supply time.
know what I love about this power supply so far? I'm not using twist ties and Velcro. I love that. I think I'm in love. Oh, he's trying to get me to play over here. suddenly want to play, huh? Out of this whole time, you're like, dead, we're playing. Now. Right now. strips. Okay. Now, I'm gonna slide it in there. Around this mangled cable mess. I get to have oh so much fun cleaning up. Even the back side of this thing is pretty. And look at it. Like all white. Don't worry about that. Gotta deal with that. Power supply mounted. Now we just have to deal with a mangled mess of wires on the back side. We can fire it up. Fire it up. Yeah. Also, I have one cable that I'm just not interested in dealing with. Wish I had PWM extensions here, but I'm pretty sure I'm all out. Need.
Why is it so difficult? My sense is it's difficult today. Okay. WM splitter. I'm not dealing with all that shine and glitter and glow. Oh, hello, GP of Light. I decided you weren't sitting there today. Sure. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. to be plugged in, that's it. That's a tight fit. Okay. Now that that's done, we can finally plug in this fan. Uh, 
on. Plug in. That's good. Got that all cleaned up now. Figure out these masks. Couple of things. One more RGB connection is floating around here somewhere. Ah. There it is. Now we just need to clean up this cable management. Finish plugging in a couple more things and we could fire this bad boy up. See what she looks like. One day I'll have to make a sweet build like this for you. Hell yeah, sir. This one's just been a feisty build. Very feisty. Say the least. Been a very feisty build. Anyway, Oh, hell no.
This is focus time, boys. I'm gonna get this done. We can move on to the next. Man, I'm out of zip ties. What? Where else put some of this cable? Part of access cable here. Not a ton of places to put it.
All right, let's fire this bad boy up and see if it works. Just gotta fix the GPU plate again. That's interesting. Throw out those magnets. Not very many spots for the card to stick a magnet. Back of it. Gotta clean some of this up real quick. Okay, finish cleaning this up and then we'll uh, fire it up. Hey Nacho, what's up, man? You've been watching this this whole time, man? Awesome. Sorry I got quiet there. I was just kind of focused on getting this done because it was going a bit. Need to get it finished. Now I'm just cleaning it up. Yeah, work real quick. Then we'll get it plugged in and fired up. I'll see if if I screwed anything up. Back panel.
All right, so let's plug it in. Binary. Let's see what this pink and white beauty looks like. Plug it in the leg stem. Always a good sign. Don't worry, I'll switch to a different view. You guys ready for this? y'all think what do you think of this build Looking really good. Hell yeah, man. White pink theme. We got some custom plates by B1 Tech. And, uh, we do have a post. We got 32 gigs of RAM. We got the i7 12700K. Um, checking in, so that's good to go. Look at those RGB back plates. They turned out pretty badass. It goes really good with the RGB strip that's already on the case here. It eliminates from the back of both of these plates, so it looks really cool. And then you got the RGB from the three fans in the front. You got RGB from the three fans on the top, and then RGB in the back. RGB RAM. This thing is an RGB machine. Looks good. I want to look into those plates. Yeah, those plates are by B1 Tech. Go to their website. Sign them if you want. <laughs> it's, it's a ton of RGB. You can get an RGB tan here because I can stick my head in here. I already have an RGB tan. This PC comes free. Unlimited RGB tanning. Yeah, it's definitely a badass PC. I really like how it turned out. I think they will be super happy with this.
All right. Everything turned out perfectly after all of that struggle. We built it right still, and everything's working. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> we got it right, guys. We got it right, man. Look at it. Right on, guys. All right, well, that's going to conclude the stream for today. Tomorrow, we do have another stream. Another Intel build. But we're going to be doing it in the Leon Lee 216. Very similar to this case, but Leon Lee's version. Compare the two. And maybe I should <laughs> do a quick comparison of the two. Send the feedback back to Fantex. Especially when you're working with a 360 millimeter AIO that says that it supports how big of a pain in the ass it is to fit it in there. <laughs> this is, I think, last year's model. So, modern. Meaning it was released end of or towards the end of 2022. But, uh, I mean, it works. Don't get me wrong. And I like the look of the case and its compact size. It is smaller than the Leon Lee 216, but a little bit of extra space makes the build experience for the builder, whoever that might be, be or somebody else, or whoever's building in this case, um, it would gives you a better experience. Comparing the two. So, anyway, if you guys like the thing, make sure you like and share. Also, make sure you are following for tomorrow's stream, because I'll be building another piece. And then Friday or Saturday, we'll have the Phoenix build. So, somewhere towards the end of the week here. We have the Phoenix build. Um, and somewhere in between that, there's another stream. So, we have one, two, three, three more streams to do this week, for sure. So, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys on the next stream. Thanks for stopping in and hanging out. Hope you enjoyed it.